Hey everyone, this is Andy Melboff again, and in this video we're going to continue exploring the new geometry tool available on the Desmos platform, and we're going to use it to take a look at how teachers and students can create circles, polygons, as well as angle measures. Picking up where we left off last time, I again encourage you to sign in or log in so that any uh, of these tasks or creations that you make can be saved and used again and shared with students. So again, please sign in or create a free account if you already haven't done so. So what we're going to continue to do now is explore some of these tools across the top. Now this graph canvas right here, just to let you know, I left the grid turned on. I can turn the grid off and I can turn the axes off to just get a plain white canvas. I'm going to go ahead and turn the grid back on as well as the axes just for purposes of what we're going to look at today. Now after adjusting those I want to jump over to exploring circles. Now there's a little triangle here meaning there's more than one option under the circle tool. The first item is a circle and you can see we can also use a compass as well as an arc. So I want to start with the basic circle and if I choose circle I can drop a point anywhere here that I want to drop it and then as I move away from that point, that point's going to be the center. And so I'm going to create a circle with another point here. So I just locate where I want to go and click. Now I'm still in circle creation mode, so unless I want a second circle, I want to go over here to my select tool. Now this circle we've created, it can be manipulated by students. So they can drag this first point and that changes the center. Notice, as I change the center, the other point did not move. So I'm just creating a bigger circle. I'm getting a bigger radius. I can also choose to locate this second point anywhere I want to go, and that also will change the size and shape of my circle. Well, as we move forward in geometry, oftentimes we want to talk about circles in terms of a radius. So let's see if we can put a radius into play here. So now I want to go to a line segment tool. I'm going to click on segment and I want to run a segment from my center point out to my point on the edge of the circle. And I'll click my line select tool to go back into out of that line segment creation mode. And now I can adjust my radius, which adjusts the size of the circle. And I can move also this point here. So we can look at some different things available by those two points there. And again, I can click on a point, I can style it differently, I can make my center point a different color, maybe I want it black, and maybe I want to put a label, and maybe I want to call it C for center. So here's my center point. I can choose to make it not draggable. Let's see what happens if it's not draggable. Well, students can't move the center, but they can adjust the circle by moving this point on the outside. So I'm going to change this outside point to have also the color black and I'm going to have it have a label. We'll just leave it at D. So this is now CD. So students can manipulate this circle in this way. Now we can also do some other interesting things with this circle. Maybe we want to have a circle with a diameter. Well, I can also start with a radius or a diameter and then build the circle around it. So I'm going to go ahead and select using box select everything I've created so far and I'll delete them. And maybe we start this in a different way. I'm going to start with a line segment and I'll put one here at 0, 2 and I'll put another, well we'll put this one down at 2, 0. So now I can create a circle around those two. I want to pick which one of these is going to be my center point. So maybe I want this point right here to be my center and I can drag it out until I hit the other point I've created. And what I have now is a circle that can be again manipulated by changing the radius. I can also locate the center point to different spots there as well. If I wanted to create a circle around a diameter, I can do that as well. Well, rather than using box select in all of this, also here on the left, there are undo and redo buttons. So I'm just going to undo several times until I get a blank screen and I'll put another line segment in here. So here, this one's going to go right about there. And now I want to find the midpoint of that because I can consider this now to be a diameter. 
and I can create a circle with my center at the midpoint going to the edge here. And again, manipulable by students, changing size and shape, etc. So those are some things we can do with the circle tool. Now I'm going to go undo for a minute and go back to just creating a circle with a radius. And I'm going to create a line segment for that radius. And I'm going to create another line segment as another radius. So I've got two of them here. So I want to name my center point C again. And I'm going to make it black. And I can name my other points as well. I'm going to keep them just purple colored and I'll label them. That'll be D. This one, let's see what it gives it for a label, it gives it E. So I've got three labeled points here. I can now do some things with the angle created at C. So if I wanted to measure an angle, I've got an angle tool up here. So let's see what the options are. I can get an angle or what's called a directed angle. We'll start with the angle. After selecting angle, I'm going to put a point down at the first vertex that I want to be a side of my angle. So I'm going to pick point D and then I'm going to go to point C and then finally out to point E. So what I've created is a kind of a three prong reference to this angle. An outside point on an edge, a center point at the vertex, another outside point at the edge. And this measurement will show it's always measured in tenths of a degree. I don't know of a way to change that. That's a request that's been made to the desk most people. But as students manipulate this, you'll see the angle changing in real time. So they can create obtuse angles inside. And they can also create, if they go far, far enough, another obtuse angle on the other side. And we can also create what are called directed angles. So let me select this segment and I'll delete that segment. I'll delete this angle and I'll delete this segment. So now I'm just at point C in the center, point D on the outside. And I'm gonna create some more segments here. So I've created another situation where I want to maybe measure an angle. Well, here's what's nice that we can do with this is choose the directed angle feature. Now, I need to think about where I'm starting. So if I start down here towards the right-hand side of the circle, and I click, and then I go to the middle, and then I finish up here at this point, a different type of angle is formed. I mean, it still gives us the measurement 73.8 degrees, and that looks right, but we also have a direction in, in the form of a small arrow, though. That means we started from this segment, and then we rotated 73.8 degrees this way. And you can see that directed angle will change. Now, watch what happens if I bring this point down below. I think this is pretty cool this angle is now measured in terms of a negative angle because we're rotating now from here to here in a clockwise direction. So for those of you that work with students in trig areas, um, you'll want to make note of the fact that you can do positive and negative angle rotations based on whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. A third feature for us available under this circle tool is the arc. I'm not going to touch on the compass now, that's going to be in a later video, but I can create an arc on this circle. So you can see the circle gets a little heavier colored green when I'm hovering over it. So I'm going to locate a point right up here. I need a second point for the middle of the arc or somewhere in between, doesn't have to be necessarily the middle, and then I'm going to locate a third point way over here on the left. Now it doesn't look like I did anything. But I'm going to choose the select tool here and if I hover over where I was just creating and I click you'll see this portion of the circle is a little bit darker green than the entire circle. This is an arc now. Now by default it comes in the same color. I always want an arc to have a different color so I'm going to change it to orange 
and now we can clearly see there's an arc right here. And if I manipulate this middle point at all, nothing changes, but I can lengthen my arc or I can shorten my arc as well. Now the reason we need three points is this is a minor arc that we've created. I can also create a major arc going the other way. So I'm gonna go back to my arc tool. I wanna to start at this point. I'm gonna have a middle point over here and then I'll wrap up up here. And I'm gonna go back to select. I'll click on that major arc and I wanna make it a different color. We'll make this one blue. And so there we can talk to kids about the minor arc in orange and the major arc in blue making up the entire circumference of the circle, those types of things. So that's a nice tool to be able to have and lengthening this minor arc shortens the major arc, all those types of conversations we can have with kids. The last tool I want to introduce to you in this video is the polygon tool. So I'm going to clear out what I have by choosing box select, encompassing all of those, and I'll just trash them, put them in the trash can, they're gone. Here's my polygon tool. No other options here, it's just the polygon tool. As I drag my hand, my, my cursor, out onto the canvas, you can see a point. So it's asking me, where do you want this first vertex to go? So maybe I'll put one right at the origin. I can put another point up here at 2, 4, and maybe another point at 4, 0. Now if I want, I can keep going. And you can see here, as I drag down, I'm starting to create a kite, or in essence, any quadrilateral. But if I want to finish with a triangle, I'll just go back to where I started and click again. And now my triangle is complete. And I can manipulate, as well as students can manipulate, the different features in this triangle. Now, as before, I can click on a vertex. I can change color, and I can put a label on it. I can also click on in the center of this polygon itself, and I can change its color. So maybe I want the interior of this to be orange. And I can click on these other points and maybe make them the same color. And all the other features we saw earlier also work inside of polygons. For example, the angle tool. So if I choose angle, I'll click on a first point, a second point, and a third point. And now I have an angle created here at my vertex. And that angle changes in real time. And if you want students to manipulate one or two points, but not all three, you can click on any point you want and uncheck the draggable box. And now this point right here is not draggable by students. It's locked in there, but they can manipulate these other points at will. So that's a simple triangle created there. I'm gonna go back up to the polygon tool and I'm gonna do this a little bit quicker. I'm gonna make a quadrilateral. So here's a sloppy quadrilateral. It's not really anything special, but again, it can be manipulated. I can uh, tag and label the vertices. I can click on the polygon itself, change its color. All of those things are available to me. And I can create polygons um, from existing ones. Let me show you that. So I'm gonna click on the polygon tool again, and I want a poly polygon to go from A over to here, over to here, over to here, and then back to A. So I've created a quadrilateral from an existing uh, triangle there. So those are options as well. Uh, the, this angle measurement will stay because it's only part of that triangle. So that's going to wrap up this second video on using some of the tools in the new Desmos Geometry tool that's available on their platform. In our next video, we're going to talk more about the expression boxes that are over here on the left that make this look a lot like a Desmos graphing calculator and how we can do some interesting things geometry-wise with these boxes. Thanks for watching.